enough. Um, I guess I'll refresh my Twitch page, make sure everything works looks fine there. Okay. And let me just send out a quick tweet. I'm just going to wait just a moment to see if any, any folks show up. Uh, if so, cool. If not, um, I guess the primary value of this will be the, uh, the video on demand. Uh, hello, Retro Nuba. Uh, just a just a heads up. Tonight is not a uh, a Delver stream. Um, tonight is going to be a 3D pixel art model and 3D modeling uh, stream. All right, I will go ahead and get started. Um, so tonight is just going to be something fun. It's just going to be making some art. It's not Delver related. It is um, actually it was uh, kind of the prompt for this was a, a game designer and a toy maker. His name is uh, Thomas Knoppers, and he makes these really cool chunky robot papercraft toys. And he was asking some folks on Twitter um, how they might go about um, creating a three D model out of it. And I went ahead and volunteered. Uh, to, to kind of sh maybe create this, to create this video to show him how I might tackle that because um, Delver, it, it has chunky, uh, very pixely art and it's, it's kind of my jam, I guess. And uh, I'd love to tackle the subject. Um, what's cool is um, he's already made the model uh, by hand. So he's done the pixel art, he's printed it out and uh, he's kind of cut it and glued it together, which means it should be correct. Like if uh, the 3D model should should come together uh, without any sort of um, dimension uh, dim problems with the dimensions. So what we'll be working on is this little pizza robot down here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's the, the second guy here, this little pizza robot. Um, I reached out to him and uh, he sent me the the art for it. So just go ahead and pop it into Photoshop. Take a look at it. Uh, textures. So it is, it looks very much like video game art. It's a, uh, it's pixel art. It's, um, and in, fa in fact, if you look at it, it looks like an unwrapped 3D model already, which is really cool. Uh, what we need to get out of this right now is just uh, how how big the image is. So I'm just gonna go image size. So it's excuse me, it's 344 pixels uh, by 503, and that will be useful uh, when we're uh, working in Blender. So 344 by 503. Uh, so I'm just I already have a Blender launched. Uh, I'm gonna assume you know a little bit about Blender. Um, so this is, uh, so I won't cover too much of that in depth. There's lots of tutorials uh, covering that. But I'm gonna do the famous uh, select everything, delete everything. Um, uh, real quick, middle mouse looks around, middle mouse shift pan, uh, scroll the middle mouse zoom in and out. And what I want to do is go to orthographic view. Wait, before I get too far along, let me turn on my screencast keys so you can see uh, what exactly I'm hitting. Uh, in case I don't mention what I'm doing, you can, you can kind of pause the video and look at uh, what I've hit. So I'm going to press 5 to go to orthographic view and then numpad 7 to, uh, to go to the top view. I'm going to add a plane and then to center the view on the plane. Uh, I'm going to turn off the uh, 
the little manipulator uh, because I, I personally don't use it. And what I want to do is I want to size this plane uh, so that it matches uh, the dimensions of the, uh, the texture. So I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode, uh, control tab, select uh, what, what part of the mesh I want to manipulate. So I'm going to work with the edges. And then I'm just going to, because um, when you create a plane, you get a two by two plane. So I'm just going to move the edges. Uh, so I get a, a, a one by one plane. And then I just have to scoot everything over um, appropriately. So in the X, I need to go, uh, what was it? 344 minus one, so that's 343. And in the Y, I need to get Y, uh, I need to go uh, 502. Uh, Shift C, and that will uh, uh, zoom the camera to contain everything. Um, what I've done here is instead of uh, instead of fiddling with the grid settings, I've just made the object large enough such that um, when I zoom in, every every grid mark should be one pixel. So now what I want to do is I'm going to create a material, a uh, new material. Uh, I'm going to make it shadeless because I don't care about lighting. I'm going to create a new, so up here in these little tabs, uh, material and texture. I'm going to uh, create a new texture, which is an image that uh, Thomas provided. I'm going to go ahead and open up uh, the texture we just saw. Um, I need to turn it on in the 3D viewport over here. So I'm going to go, I think what, material, texture. Okay, so let's do a couple things. I think material was correct. Let me make sure, uh, yeah, it's, so the mapping here is set to UV. Let me make sure it has UV coordinates. That could be a problem. So over here in the, uh, the 3D view, I'm going to tab, go to edit mode, uh, A to select all, U to unwrap. And, um, the, the the default unwrap isn't very great for some odd reason. It, it wants to uh, unwrap it at a 90. Uh, so what I found works uh, for this, and actually I use this for a lot for Delver too, uh, to get nice crisp um, pixels, is you, when you unwrap, do a project from view. And in this case, since the the, the texture sheet and the, uh, the plane are exact same size, I can do a project from view balance. And that should pop everything in correctly, and everything should be a uh, a single pixel. Uh, if you look, it's kind of fuzzy, and uh, we can correct that by going to user preferences system, and then just unticking nip maps, and that will uh, that will sharpen up um, how the it basically turns off the uh, the texture interpolation. So we get nice crisp uh, pixels, um, which is which is handy for um, uh, for keeping, I guess, for making nice clean pixel art uh, in three D. Um, and this this approach is a little bit different because, again, like I said, we were starting with the texture and then we're using it to create the model. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, each individual piece here, I'm just going to chop out. So I'm going to hit uh, Control R to make a cut. Uh, I want the cut to, we're done here in the bottom left is a correct UVs. I think my head's, my head's above it. Let me see if I can, yeah, there's a correct UVs tick mark here. I'm just going to enable that. So now when I do a cut, it doesn't actually change the UVs. And I'm just going to try to position stuff as close as I can. And then, so this is going to be lined up across the bottom here. And then uh, I'm going to snap this to the grid. So if you don't know what the command for something is in Blender, you can hit spacebar and just start typing. So if I'm typing snap, I'm going to snap uh, selection to grid. So this will snap this edge perfectly to uh, the grid. Um, a tricky thing about working with um, the grid uh, in Blender is it will always snap to the visible grid. So right now, I, I zoomed in just enough so I could see the small tick marks here. Uh, if I zoomed out any further, it would have snapped to the the next uh, uh, step up, which is increment of 10. Uh, so that is a little bit fiddly. And I'm just going to kind of proceed to chop out um, pieces. Uh, so I'm going to go to face mode. I'm going to grab this face and hit Y to separate it out. And then I'm just going to, again, uh, cut. 
and try to line it up nicely there. And then uh, hitting space will bring up the last thing I did. So that was snap selection to grid. So I'll snap that there. And then just kind of rinse and repeat. So face uh, wider uh, split. So now that's like that. Um, here I can cut this one nice and close. Now you'll notice these aren't actually perfect, um, but we should be able to correct that pretty pretty easy. Again, I'm going to snap that to grid. And, uh, face uh, wide split. Um, the thing is, is that if you notice like here, I'm, I'm off a little bit, uh, what you can do is you can press GG to do an edge slide, and that will allow you to slide the edge without changing the UVs, and that way I can uh, better uh, position uh, this edge and then snap it. Um, and then you kind of... Uh, rinse and repeat for all these so you know I, I would keep I would keep uh, breaking this down um, so let me see retro Novo was asked what's the difference between mip maps and anti-aliasing um, if I understand it correctly uh, anti-aliasing is a type of texture filtering um, where you sample the neighbor pixels and you blur the image slightly to I guess reduce the jag uh, the jaggedness of the polygons, um, and mip maps I believe are um, a way of sampling an image uh, when it's further away um, so that you get less artifacts. If I'm not correct, I'm sorry, but I, uh, in my mind that's how I, I believe it is. So another another helpful thing I'm going to split my view real quick. And then over here in this one, I'm going to open up. Uh, he provided a reference image, so I'm going to go to. He's going to bring up the UV, the image editor. I'm going to open up uh, that reference he gave me. So this is the thing that we're actually constructing. Is this little, uh, this little robot here, and it looks like um, this piece right here corresponds to this piece. So I'll go and show you how I would um, cut this piece out and, uh, and and shape it. So what we can do is I'm just going to select this. I'm going to hide everything but that so we can just focus on that. Uh, let me just bring that up so this makes more sense. Let me see. Okay, so I'm going to just keep. I'm going to cut now. Um, Control R uh, along. Um, where the folds would be and where the edges uh, of the actual paper would be. Okay, face mode. Uh, nope, missed, uh, missed, uh, I need a good cut down here. So control R. And there we go. So now I'm just going to uh, select the faces I want to keep. Control I to invert, X to delete the faces. So this leaves me with uh, the geo uh, that I want. And let me see if I look back at my, my reference. Um, it's this little little box looking thing. So what I'm going to do, so if I go to, so it looks like the, the face I've selected is actually the front of this, um, I think it's a scooter. Oh, it's a tire. Ha! Huh. It's the tire. So that needs to be the front. So if I press uh, uh, one to go in front view, actually I, I'm, I'm, it's not correctly oriented. So I'm just going to select everything. 
rotate it on the X by 90, uh, so it's facing me. And then I'm just going to quickly kind of fold stuff over. Um, actually, let me zoom in real quick and before I forget, and then snap everything to the grid. And then over here, what I want to do is go to um, uh, the actual texture and snap uh, the UVs uh, there. And what you see now is all uh, any gaps that were there should be gone. It should be pixel perfect. If you look, um, all these grid units should line up if I've done everything correct. Uh, it's looking good. I'm I'm not sure if I goofed or not, but I think it, I think it's it's good. Um, this actually might be off. Uh, let's just see if it's uh, going to impact the model or not. Uh, so what I want to do is go to edge mode. And I want to start folding these faces down. So I'm going to select uh, this top front uh, face. I'm going to hit Shift S, cursor to selected. Uh, I'm going to go down here and make sure that uh, my pivot is set to the 3D cursor. And then I can select this top face and then rotate it on the x axis by 90. And now I have the top uh, for the tire. And then similarly, uh, select this edge, set the cursor to it. Select this face, rotate on the Z uh, 90, uh, and just kind of repeat that. Shift S, select uh, cursor to selected. Uh, select this face, rotate on the X by 90. Um, cursor to selected by Shift S, face, rotate Z uh, 90. Um, since it rotated 90 degrees the incorrect way, you can hit the, uh, the minus key to uh, make it negative 90, and that uh, fixes things. Um, so let's take a look at, uh, at where we're at. Um, so it looks like um, I have, uh, I've, it looks like I've, I've messed up a few things. It looks like the, um, I must have got my measurements off and that these are, these three sides should be the same length, but they are all uh, different lengths. So we need to kind of reconcile that and figure out which one is correct. So I'm just going to pop in a different orthographic views and see if the um, if it looks like the pixels actually line up. So let me go to the, this side view and just kind of ballparking. It does look like uh, all the pixels line up. On this side, it looks like they do as well. Oh, wait. Uh, this is the guy I'm interested in. So, they look okay. Uh, the top. Yeah, they look a little narrow. Um, so I'm going to assume that this this side is correct, and this side is too long, and this side is too short. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to edge mode. I'm going to go down to my snaps here and go to, uh, say, vertex. And I'm just going to grab this particular edge and drag it along the Y and snap it there. And then I'm going to grab this edge, move along the Y and snap it there. And that should resolve the, the incorrect links and hopefully it fixes our, our, our incorrect uh, taxel ratio. And I need to, um, it looks like I need to fold this back for the other part of the tire. So I'm going to just add a cut right there and it looks that looks correct. Uh, let me just take a peek at the side. Uh, yeah, that should be okay. So shift S cursor to selected. Um, grab this face, rotate it with the Z on 90. And uh, last thing I might want to do here is just select everything W, uh, remove doubles. So now all these spaces are actually joined. They're not just folded on each other. And um, now we have a nice. Um, Pixel perfect um, 3D box for this uh, for this tire. Uh, Retro Nuvo is asking, are these simply paper craft toys? Yeah, um, looks like he's making paper craft toys, which I think are cool, and um, it's really similar to 3D modeling, so I'm kind of into it. Um, yeah, that's that's how I would go about doing uh, the entire model. I think it might be boring to watch me do the whole thing, um, but yeah, that's how I took. Uh, this one particular uh, element and um, I extracted out uh, the bits and kind of uh, folded them together in 3D.
hopefully uh, this has been helpful. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, hit me up on Twitter, uh, at Joshua Scaling. All right. Have a good night.